So here we're going to walk you through on how to put this data into SPSS. The first thing you want to do is go to Variable View, and you want to type in your independent variables and your dependent variable. So you can start off with IV1, IV2, for your independent variables, and then DV for your dependent variable. The next column type where it says numeric, that's just, don't worry about that. But make sure it is on numeric so you can put in numbers. Width, the 8, just allows you how many spaces you can type. So make sure you keep your names, IV1, IV2, and DV, short. For the labels, this is where you can actually clarify what all your variables are. So our first independent variable is hours of study. Our second independent variable is mathine, or amount of drug. And our dependent variable are test scores. Next, you need to put in values, which is where you put in the levels of your independent variables. So our first independent variable is hours of study. We have two levels here. The first level is 0 to 15 hours. Click Add. And then our second level, is 15 to 30 hours. Add. Okay, now our second independent variable has three levels. So the first level is no drug. The second level is 10 milligrams of methane. And the third level is 20 milligrams of methane. Next, you want to go over to your data view, where you'll actually be typing in. So when you look at the, your columns, look at your DV column. That's where you're actually going to type in all of your numbers. Again, here you can type it in however you want to. The most important part is how you label it. So for our IV1 and IV2, we already have our values labeled in according to the variable view. So for the value of 70, if you look at which level of the first independent variable, it's the first level, which we typed in as a 1 in the variable view under the value. For 80, that's the second level of the first independent variable, so type in a 2. So if you look at the first three levels that were typed in for the DV, those are all the first level of the first independent variable marked by A1, meaning that all of these numbers came from 0 to 15 hours of study. Now if you look at the second three numbers, those are all from the second level of hours of study, meaning all of these numbers came from 15 to 30 hours of study. So type in twos. For IV2, our amount of mathene, look at the chart. It goes across, so B1, then B2, then B3. So you're going to type in 1, 2, and 3. And then again, 1, 2, and 3. Now to understand these numbers a little bit better, because we just arbitrarily assigned them to the levels, you can go up to the toolbar to view and click on Value Labels. Here I'll give you the actual amounts of the levels. So after you've typed everything into the variable view, and after you've adequately learned everything by hand, because that is the way to go, you can start to use SVSS. So here we have all of our numbers listed out in the DV column. And those are your individual test scores, say for a class of graduate statistics students who are having so much fun studying statistics. 
your IV1 and IV2 columns, which are the first two columns, label which groups they go into. And here we have 0 to 15 hours, 15 to 30 hours of study versus 0, 10, or 20 milligrams of our wonderful drug, methine. Next, go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate, because we only have one dependent variable, which is test scores. You want to put your test scores, DV, into your dependent variable box, and your IVs into your fixed factors. We have no random factors or covariates in the study. Next, go to Options, and you want to click IV1, IV2, and your interaction all into Display Means 4 box. You also want to click on Descriptive Statistics, Effect Size, Observed Power, and Homogeneity Tests. Your significance level, most people like 0.05, but if you're really anal, you can use 0.01. Continue. Next, go to Plots. And you want to put your IV factors according to how you'd like to see it. So we're going to put IV2 as our horizontal axis and IV1 as our separate lines. Click Add and continue. And press OK. So here we have our output from SPSS. You want to give it a little bit of time to load because it can be a little bit fussy. So you scroll down a little bit. It gives you all your nice descriptive statistics there in case you care. The first thing, the Levine's test of the quality of error variances, is a test of homogeneity variance. Our significance value, which is 0 0.220, is not underneath 0 0.05, which means we have not significantly violated homogeneity variance, which means, whew, we're safe. So now you want to go down to test it between subjects' effects. This is the same thing that we did when we calculated by hand and told over our numbers. So if you look at the interaction, which is the IV1 and IV2, and you go over to your significance box, that 0 .000 is a little bit misleading, but it's really just under 0 .05, which means we have a significant interaction here. Similarly, if you want to look at your main effects, you would look at the IV1 and IV2 rows and go over to your significance again. 0 0.42 means that we don't have a significant main effect for IV1, but 0 0.0001 means that we do have a significant main effect for IV2. And just keep in mind, IV2 is methane. So again, these numbers match up to the F statistics that we calculated by hand. So yay, we didn't make a mistake. Here we have our handy dandy profile plot. And as you can see, methane, which is our IV2, which is on the x-axis, and IV1, the number of hours that you studied, are the separate lines. Your DV, or test scores, are on your y-axis under the estimated marginal means. As we can see, we have an interaction and main effects for methane and hours of study. Thank you, C. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs>